Andy Mogul. Vin Diesel and Paul Walker kick it old school at the box office and show the rest of Hollywood how it's done. Just how far behind in the dust did they leave their competition? Let's find out with some movie math. Finishing in first place and in the record books is Fast and Furious with 72.5 million. What kind of trophies are we talking about here? How about the biggest opening of 2009, the best non-holiday opening in Universal's history, and the biggest April opening ever beating up previous champ Anger Management? This is also a career high for both Vin Diesel and Paul Walker, guaranteeing they'll both sign up for the rumored fifth installment that was already being prepped by Universal before the movie opened. Why did everyone flock to this franchise like never before? It seems audiences are really eager for summer to start. And while Watchmen was supposed to feed that need, it didn't. So Fast and Furious, very much a summer popcorn movie, has stepped in. And runner-up at the box office is Monsters vs. Aliens with 33.5 million. While it's conquered 105 million in just two weeks, it did fall 43% from last weekend. Plus, while these monsters might have been able to take on aliens, it's doubtful they can save their audience from being snatched away by tween juggernauts Miley Cyrus and Zac Efron. Therefore, it will probably come up short against Dreamworks last summer sensation, Kung Fu Panda, which ultimately walked away with $215 million. And that could spell bad news for a sequel, as Dreamworks has never duplicated an experiment that didn't gross near the $200 million mark. And taking the number three spot is The Haunting in Connecticut with 9.5 million and a total so far of 37.2 million. But despite beating out its box office competition, The Haunting in Connecticut fell a disturbing 58%. So even though it claimed the second biggest opening for a horror movie this year, it's going to take some serious haunting of movie theaters to scare up a total gross that comes close to Friday the 13th and even My Bloody Valentine 3D. Ah, Adventureland! So bold to take on Fast and Furious! But it looks like Miramax's effort at counter-programming was unsuccessful as Adventureland came in at number 6 with just 6 million. That's a far cry from Superbad's debut of 33 million two years ago. However, all hope is not lost, as the movie got excellent reviews and could do well on DVD and cable. Many of you liked it as well, and probably saw this poor performance coming as you reported sitting in empty theaters. I asked you to rate the movie on a 1 to 10 and you gave it a 9, half a point higher than the 8.5 audiences gave it on Friday's Beyond the Trailer. And the winner of this week's one sentence review challenge is Silent Bad, who calls Adventureland a charming coming of age story of summer romance and teen mischief with a solid debut performance from Jesse Eisenberg. And runner up is Mr. Nico Pico, who adds, seeing this movie when you don't have a job is depressing, although the laughs which you get make you forget all about it. I saw a movie this weekend and I'll tell you all about it after the break. What happens when you put together one band and one filmmaker to create an original music video for $99? Watch world premiere videos every week at 99dollarmusicvideos.com. Best experienced with Verizon Fios Internet. My name's Fraser, and I see movies everywhere. You're watching Indie Mogul. As you can see from the Beyond the Trailer episode and today's box office results, the United States is experiencing fast and furious mania. I too could not resist the craze and went to see the movie on Saturday night at a theater where every showing sold out. So I guess the most obvious question is whether or not this movie is worthy of the hype. My answer? Kinda. I'd say there is about 30 minutes of awesome filmmaking in Fast and Furious. The car racing sequences are really well done and very inventive. I love the sharp sliver of light used to illuminate the driver's eyes while they raced. Very cinematic. What I didn't love was the stuff in between the races. The pacing is way too slow. In fact, I really had to power through the middle of the movie, reminding myself that yes, cool car racing sequences were not far off. Vin Diesel did a nice job letting his charisma carry him through, and Paul Walker, well, he just doesn't say FBI agent to me. However, there's a great scene where he beats the crap out of another agent who really has it coming. As for Michelle Rodriguez and Jordana Brewster, they're barely in the movie, which, at least with Rodriguez, is disappointing. And as a side note, I also liked seeing Han from Tokyo Drift and wished he'd had a bigger part. So while I don't feel that Fast and Furious is a must-see, if you want that summer movie experience a month early, this is it. And at the end of the day, I'm still a fan of the franchise and will be seeing the fifth installment, which is said to take place in Europe. Maybe they can get Jason Statham to cameo in some sort of Fast and Furious and Transporter crossover. And now it's time for a new segment, Poster Workshop. Movie math is about the box office, and the box office shows how good a job Hollywood did connecting with audiences. And one of Hollywood's best tools to do that is the movie poster. So for this month, each week I'll be looking at the posters for one of your films and offering my critique. 
Today's poster is from Anthony Vivio for his original film, Twin Image. The best thing about this poster is that it seems to match your genre, Anthony, being similar to posters for Sweet Home Alabama, Bride Wars, and Confessions of a Shopaholic. This is good because it immediately lets the audience know what to expect and will alert fans of this genre that this movie is for them. You also have a very nice use of space with the umbrella, leaving no dead zones on your poster, and the color of the umbrella is eye-catching and fun. However, that said, I would either give some reason for them to be holding the umbrella, like cartoon raindrops maybe, or give them a prop that has to do with the movie, as they do in those other posters I mentioned. I'd also change your tagline to be more descriptive of the movie. Right now, I'm thinking it's kind of like the parent trap, so tell me what your twist is on that story. Hope that was helpful, Anthony. Does anyone else have some constructive feedback? Please leave a comment. And if you'd like to watch Twin Image right now, here's the link. As always, thanks for watching Movie Math, and I'll see you on Fridays Beyond the Trailer covers Observe and Report, Dragon Ball Evolution, and Hannah Montana the Movie. I'm Grace Randolph, and we just did some Movie Math. Subscribe, comment, rate.